from them. Those challenges, they'll rise up no more. Amen. That sickness will not repeat itself the second time. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are blessed to be here this morning. Amen. It is not by chance. It is not by mistake. You were destined to be here this morning. Amen. I want to use this great opportunity given to me this morning to extend my greetings to our pastor, Pastor Sam. In absentia, I say, May the Lord bless him. Amen. May the Lord keep Amen. him. Amen. And may the Lord make his face to shine continually in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. In present, we have the first lady, Mama Valerie. Please put your together for that.
Because without the presence of God, 
Joshua 13 to 15. We are going to study a life by a character of one of the great prophets of old. This man is talking, the story about him is so interesting. Let us see. Exodus 33. The Bible says, it says, if it is true that you look favorable on me, let me know your ways so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The next verse. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything, I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. The next verse. The Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. You shall give me the other translation. It talks about the presence. Now, God, God to King James. Now let me use King James. Pastor Sam is not here. That's why James can be shot. Let me use King James. Hallelujah. Now, now he said, he said, if, is this, this is, okay, the second one down. And he said, now, he said, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your, your way, that I may know you, and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider that that this nation is your people. And I said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Wow. After today, there is anointing that will come on you. Amen. That the presence of God will go with you. Amen. And you will have rest on every side. Amen. Rest on every side is peace on every side. Amen. Rest on every side is joy overflow. Let me tell us this morning. We could do everything we want to do. But don't 
allow the presence of God to depart from you. Amen. Let me tell you, if the presence of God depart from you, you are going to be the tools in the hands of the enemy. Is somebody getting me? When the presence of God depart from you, you are going to be a liability in the hands of the enemy. Because if it does show to and fro, there will be no satisfaction anymore in your life. Then there was this song, take me not away from your presence. Then I began to understand and I began to realize that the presence is heaven to me. Amen. Is somebody getting me? Yes, that his presence is heaven to us. Amen. Because the ability to function well, it is when the presence of God is in the life of a sister. It's in the life of a brother. So no matter what we do, if the presence of God is absent, let me tell you, you struggle and struggle and struggle and struggle. I will begin to say that there is a cause. Yes, it is a cause. Because the presence of God is absent. Somebody say better amen. Amen. As we are going through this morning, I will be taking us on the advantage of the presence of God in the life of a believer. The benefits of the presence of God in the life of us. See, do you know why I always like talking about benefits? Let me tell you something, Mama. The devil has been defeated. You should be conscious of this. It has been defeated. So if you if you don't see the advantage that Christ did on the cross of Calvary, then you're thinking about the devil. Because on the cross of Calvary, he made everything possible for us. When he says it is finished, it is finished. Now, it could it couldn't have been possible. Because the Bible says it was heavy on Christ Jesus. It was so heavy. It was, the, it was so much painful on him. Until the Bible records it. That even the tears that came out of his eyes were like great drops of blood. Then he asked a question to that same God. He said, if it is possible, take this cup for me. But when, when you look at that account of the Bible, you need to understand that it was out of love. Out of love. That he had to do all what he took on the cross of Calvary, that will start bowling and say we are free. Amen. That will start bowling, we say that God is with us. We will start bowling, we say our case is different. Why? Because the presence of God is in us. Amen. Now, let me tell you the reason why I always like talking about benefits. Let me see um, this scripture in the Bible. It says that God has, his divine power has give, given us everything. Everything. Now, his divine power is the presence of God in our life. That he has given us what? Everything. So I want to talk about the everything that God has given us. I want to talk about what he has not given me. Yes. He has given me new sickness. No. So why would you be talking that, that sickness is my enemy? It was like my mother's sickness. The same thing. No. no. You can in God. You are a tired of a deity called divinity. You are a tired of this big God that he, the world cannot so when Christ died on the cross, everything was left on the cross. So your confession shouldn't be what he, had, he, he defeated already. Your confession should be that I have joy, 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 joy overflow. Of the presence of God. Amen. Now, when we go back to the script. 
scripture. You see that Moses did not ask for signs. He did not ask for miracle. Mama, are you getting me? Moses, he would have asked that God did do something. He would have said, God just killed this Israelite. God could have done it. Okay. Are you hearing me? He would have said, God bled their eyes. God could have done it. Yes. But I said, say, he said, God, if I want your presence, he said, if your princess cannot go with me, don't take us there. So it makes me to understand, sir, that what we need is divine instruction. Somebody is not getting me. By the special grace of God, I, I am, Mama, I told you that I'm about 40 something years of age. I'm not all that young. I'm of age. And I'm, I've traveled about six countries in this world by God's grace. Then I come to realize that sometimes what you need is divine instructions. Is somebody getting me? I spent, I grew up and I was, when I was about 20 something, I was having so much money. When I was 20 of age, I was having so much money. I was very young then that I could sleep in a full year in a hotel. I was having so much money. Very young. They were calling me young money. Mm -hmm. Young yeah. money. Yeah. money. Yeah. And yeah. no, no, not in now. So I I I will leave Cameroon, I will go to Nigeria, I will go to Alaba International Market, Lagos, I will buy things and I will go back home. I I, I make time stealing of what I buy. I made so much profit. So then I would just be lavishing this money, doing whatever I want to do with this money. But sir, do you know that in the presence of God is not in the mass life, mm -hmm. the end of it is destruction. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will go to Lagos, come back home, travel. So one day I, I, I drove to my village with a new car. And when I went to, it was during, the, and during December, my mother said, no, you child. This is not the child I gave birth to. Stay there. <laughs> Why are you coming with this car for? I said, he said, no, no, no. First, stay there. Stay there. We have to discuss first. Because I don't know how, how at this age. Is someone getting me? So I have to explain and explain and explain to my mother. At the same time, she was not really convinced. But because of the love of her mother, she allowed me in. So I started going up having all this kind of money. But my life was, I was thinking I was happy. Just like the man of God said. There is a way you are living your life and you think it's happiness. Yeah. It is not happiness. Yeah. It's not happiness. I will stay in the bar. They already know me in that hotel. Any girls that come to find me, they'll say, no, no. and they call my name. No, no. Whatever you want, they'll give it to you. No, no. <laughs> you understand? Because then money stop nonsense. No, 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 no. There was so much money that I was having so much money. But I started going up gradually. Things started fading away. Things started fading away. And let me tell you. If your mothers have been praying for you, mm. you understand that the covering of their presence will always be with you. Amen. So I started traveling and all of a sudden when I get to 28 years of age, because I started having money from 20, when I get to about 20 something years of age, this money, the money was not like before. So that desperacy to get to have so much money, no, the life I was living back, and people is not seeing me lavishing. I didn't want to make that name. Oh no, I didn't want to be, you know, to be making bossy. People should know that Addis is standing. Right. So I was trying all hard to make sure that I meet that my status quo then. But it was not happening. So a friend of mine approached me and said to me, Sally, but I, there, is a, a, there is a place I can, I can go, they'll give you money. And this guy was is my classmate. He said, no, there is a place that we can go, they'll give you money. And this guy, do you know um, Melon, a pussy? Yeah. He, used to, he used to do this a pussy in, in the market. But all of a sudden, the guy became a millionaire overnight. So I said, ah, if this guy could have money, then what about me? So he told me that we'll go to that place and going to give us money. So when we get there, it was from 12 p.m. to 1 a.m. We get there. We walked, it was a church house. We walked inside. When we get inside, sir, there were different people I saw that I knew. Some of them I don't know, but some I recognize. So somebody approached me and said to me, um, you came with Igwe, because the guy name is Igwe. So you came with Igwe, I said, yeah. They said, Igwe said they should give you something. I said, okay. So while the person left, the person who came to take the order and left, a man came to me and touched me and called me by my father's name. My father's name at that hour of the day. Then I said to me, who brought you here? I said, is he going? Then he asked me, have you eaten anything? I said, no. 
have you taken this? He said, he said to me that as he's talking to me, I should leave this place and not look back. No. What I'm saying is, the presence of God in the life of a man will protect you. Amen. Then I have not known Christ, but I was born in the church. My parents grew up in the church. So I want to believe that it was their coverage that attracts God's presence that I was protected. To come to the Lost Country Church, sir, this guy died in a, in a boat accident. He was the only one that died. That Holy Bee came and attacked him. People of God, let me tell you this morning. I am talking about the presence of God. It is all we need. It is all is required. In order to stay in this wicked world, don't look at what is happening outside. That is why, man, there is nothing that can move me anywhere in this life. No, nothing. There is nothing. Man, I told you I went to Singapore. I met a Nigerian guy. He said to me, sir, he said he was spending dollar bill, just making dollar bill in a club. And I said, no, I need to spend the same money. <laughs> then he said, if I want to spend the same money, he will tell me what to do. He said, can I? I said, yes, he went and call one of the locals. That is, this is a guy that is giving them this cooking. They'll take it out from Singapore and they make this money. When you were entering Singapore, there is a note. They'll tell you to sign. They'll tell you if you have been caught with drug, mm -hmm. it's dead. Yes, yeah, true. 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 So that same time when I left that club to where I'm living, I started praying because as at that time I would have known Christ. Then the, 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 the leaflet fell from my Bible. Then I look at it. It just is a reminder that where I'm going is where it's dead. I'm talking about the presence of God. It will give you direction. It will give you what? Direction. So I'm saying all this because let me tell you, if you are here this morning, and you don't want to require the presence of God, know your life is in danger. Yeah, yeah you may think everything around you starts sweet and smells good. No, it doesn't. It doesn't smell good. Because the Bible says there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end of it is destruction. You may smell it, no, it's not smelling good. No, it's not. Because if the presence is lacking, the doors for an enemy to come in is 100%. It's not 99, 100. Because he will be, you will have opened the door for him and he will deal with you so mercilessly that when you wake up from there, you say, Oh God, I did I know, but it might be too late. But I pray this morning, not go and regret in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't not regret in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let me tell you one simple story again before we continue. When I left Singapore, I came back home. And I said, God, how is this going to happen? That's okay. A friend of mine was in Indonesia. I traveled to Indonesia. Still the same drug issue. And then, uh, God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. I could have been. I was jail in Singapore. I was I've been in jail in Indonesia. But in all this, I was still seeing God is giving me an instruction. Because if you love him, no matter how you are going, he will always want to bring you back. Yeah. You know, a mother, will, a mother will take the child like this, but he will still bring the child. Yeah. So that was what God was doing to me. Mm. And that is why I'm talking to you standing here that if you are here this morning, you are not going to find the presence of God. Your life is in danger. Mm. So one of the benefits we are talking about this morning is this, that he will guide your ways. Mm. Now, when you see what happened, when Moses was asking God that if you don't go with me, I will not go, he was asking for direction. Because at the point, at, at that point, Moses himself was confused. He was saying, Ah, is it not the same people that you put in the right sea for? Is it not the same people that you put manna? Then what is really happening now? Lord, I need what direction. How we go, how we handle this case, I need what direction. So that is why we as Christians. We as believers, when the presence of God is on, of, of, over us, the direction will be clear. Amen. The direction will be clear. Mm. It might be delayed. It might delay. Yes, it is possible. Like what he said this morning, that somebody here, what you need is just waiting. Mm. You have already been. You have. You have been announced a winner already. Yeah. Yeah. Is somebody getting me? Yeah. 
The announcement has been made already in the spirit because it is the spirit that controls the physical. So when 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 David was anointed, as at that time, it was heaven that recorded it. Is somebody getting me? It was heaven that recorded the kingship of David. That that time eyes have not seen. So you are here sitting under the sound of my voice. Heaven has already recorded your blessings. It is happening already as we speak now. It is happening.
Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says, nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. The next verse. You, you, you will guide me with your counsel and afterward you will see me to glory. Amen. He will guide you with his counsel. Then afterward, receive him with his glory. The presence of God. So when you look for him every blessed day of your life, every day when you look for him more and more, he will do what? He will guide you. And at the end of the day, he will glorify himself in your life. Why? Because you are a carrier of him. You are a carrier of him. So anybody that carries God, don't always glorify that person in his life. Because when you carry him, you also know, this is my daughter, he carries me, or she carries me. Yes, yes, she needs a husband, I know. Let me tell you, one of God, we were going for a, a, a lady one time, and a word came, and um, I said, madam, the, the guy will not get married to you. The lady was about 36, 37, yeah, 30 something years of age. So she was like, ah, this man that sees me every blessed day. This man that calls me darling. This man that tells me I love you. Then you are telling me that this man will not get married to me. And it was a problem. <laughs> she didn't stop coming to church. Yes, woman of God. She stopped coming. He said, I don't mean well for her. I said, oh, no, it's not like I don't mean well. I meant well for you. But I was just directed to say this. She stopped coming to church. See, when you lack the presence of God, you are doomed for destruction. You are doomed for destruction. So, she stopped coming to church. Before we know, they said they are having their um, uh, um, introduction. They had introduction. Say, I might love my wife to be, my husband to be. So everything was so sweet, so refreshing. The woman was looking at her age, said, no, I have found a guy that I've said I will marry you, and I said, yes, I will. So you want to come and be a, 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 a stumbling block. <laughs> well, that's not a stumbling block. So, after the introduction, the guy was a driver. The guy was driving a chief magistrate of the court. A lady who is a chief magistrate. This guy was a driver to this man, to this lady. So, the guy had an accident and died. But you know the lady, if you look, if you see the car, it's 10 and 10 and 10. But the lady, nothing happened to that lady. The chief magistrate, nothing happened to her. But the guy died at the spot. And the lady came back to say, oh, sir, I'm sorry, oh. Say, I'm sorry, oh. The same person that said, I, don't, I did not make well for her. When you lack the presence of God, you will not be able to see the focus and plan God have in your life. Because you will see something and you will believe in that it is the plan for no. When the acts, when the, the presence of God is absent, you will say something and you will be thinking it's working for your good, but it is leading you, it's leading you to destruction. And the man died, and he was buried. So if that girl could have been married to that man, he would have been widowed in one week. She would have become widowed in one week. Is somebody getting me? So the presence of God is what required. It's required. Somebody say amen. amen. His presence will give us clarity and put on to the right path. He will give us clarity and he will put on to the right path. Because what Moses was looking was on the path the children of Israel will go. So that was why he was seeking the counsel of God. That was why he was seeking God and he was asking God, if your presence is not good with me, Lord, we are, don't take us from here. Yeah. Have you ever asked yourself that question, people of God? Have you come to the point in your life that you know your effort has ended? Have you come to that point that you turn to the left, the wall is there? You turn to the right, the wall is there. And you say you cannot move further. And when you turn behind, it's like the, 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 the soldiers, the Egyptian soldiers are coming behind you. Have you come to that place? Please, seek God. Always require for him. Always ask him for clarity. Because if you don't ask him, you fall a victim just like that way. If you don't ask God for clarity, you fall a victim. When I started business in this country, the first time I was took, I was took about thirty something thousand dirhams because I did not, I did not know. One Pakistan guy came to me, and in, in two thousand 
15 to 16. So he said, ah, I, I, he can do employment visa for me. I did. I, he, 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 he put out two visas first. They were genuine visas. And I saw it and I was moved. No clarity, no vision. No insight, nothing. Nothing. So excited. The presence of God was absent at that moment. <laughs> then I started advertising. That is how money came into my heart. That was how I... Then he took me to Tassil and typed some uh, um, contract. 170 in hand. And he collected me close to 40 something thousand. I waited and waited. No visa is coming. <laughs> waited and waited. No visa is coming. So they left, when I went to his office, they, they have been located. <laughs> No clarity, no vision. That was how I ran into debt. They called my phone from left. He, my father, he with my mother. Then we, tell, we started running. People started looking. Ah, this man, you call it to me, Pastor, you're eating our money. God will help us. He will give us a divine clarity. He will give us a divine clarity in the name of Jesus. So what says what he did that and that there was clarity and God gave him. He said, Lord, if I press, if your presence does not go, we are not going. Don't take us there. That is what we need at this time. Don't take me there, Lord. Don't take me there. Some people, all of you, we are, some of us, we are here saying that no, I want to travel to Canada. I want to go to U US. Yes, there are good places. But does the Lord want you to go there? Yes. You need clarity. Yes, sir. You need clarity. I travel and travel and travel. Do you know how it was in this country? I was able to buy my first car. It was in this country. I was able to buy a plot, a building house. It was in Dubai. And I started working with 1,200 salary. And in that 1,200, I bought my wife in this country. With 1,200, they were looking at me, but I was believing God for me. See, if you are not working on this town, and speak words. If you are not going to run and speak words, that this town will fail for me. That is how you go for me. You need to go and run and speak what? You need to go and run and speak what? I walked and all this town and I was speaking that Dubai will go for me. And it, it is working. Is somebody getting me? The presence of God is required for clarity and direction. Somebody say, Amen. 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 And when my wife came here, my beautiful, I loved her. I loved her. I celebrate her every blessed day. Every day that goes by, I celebrate my wife. Every day, I love her. And it is bad for a man to not love his woman. Is somebody getting me? Your life is in their hands. Is somebody getting me? Yes, but this one is not a present. This one is not a present. Now, the presence of God, another advantage, it will, it, will, it will give you peace and overflow joy. Yes, sir. It will give you peace and overflow joy. Amen. The Bible says, in His presence, there is fullness of joy. That is what the presence will do to you. It will give you what? Peace and overflow the presence of God. In the life of a believer, it will bring peace and overflow joy. Now the next one, in the presence, we have assurance. Amen. In his presence, we have what? Assurance. Matter of God, let me see Psalms 23 verse 4. In his presence, there is an assurance. Yes. The, the, the storm might come. The wealth might come. But there is an assurance that they're not going to take you out. Because you know the foundation on which you are standing. The foundation is Jesus. Is somebody getting there? Is that assurance? There is a yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I do what I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are not on your staff, they call forth me. That is a word of assurance. That is a word of assurance. That you know they will come, but you know that God is with you. That is working out miracle for you. That is doing something for you. That is the assurance in the presence of God in your life. Somebody say better, amen. amen. You know, today's an anointing service. 
After now, there will be an impartation of the spirit of heaven. Amen. That is going to break yokes. Amen. It's going to break yokes. Amen. It's going to lift up bodies on your shoulders. There will be a divine rest. Divine rest. See, let me tell you, there is a difference between rest and divine rest. When you enter into divine rest, when you enter into divine rest, sir, you sleep and you will be snoring. Even there is no money in your pocket. You sleep and snore. That is when you enter divine rest. Because you know God is spoken behind the scene. That every direct contact, you know they are activating. Why? Because God will give you that rest. Somebody say, Amen. 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 Now, that we're talking about the, the, the advantages of the presence of God. See, it will cause you to function well in your disability. It will cause you to function well. I said it before. Now, it's called, it calls you to tarry long in his presence. Amen. Divine presence. It will cause you to tarry long in his presence. Now, one thing I know is that if you, sometimes I, 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 I speak in tongues for one hour, mama. I go to Mamza Beach. I'll just drive my car Mamza Beach very late, mostly on Saturday's night. I go there. I will stay in the car. Sometimes I'll walk on the sand. I'll speak tongues for like one hours. I'll tarry there. See, let me tell us. For you to tarry long in the presence of God, you need His presence. Because you cannot stay long in His presence without His presence. So in his, the presence of God in your life will give you the ability or the power to stay long and wait long in Him. So when the presence of God, one of the advantages is that if you cause you to tarry long, and when you wait long in his presence, you will not come out empty-handed. Mm -hmm. No, I have never seen someone who stayed long in the presence of God and came out empty-handed. They might be scotch your, your, your time in his presence. They will say, look at her or look at him. He always stayed at his presence. No, they are scotching it for something else. That is the same way the priest is called the story of Hannah. He, he was scotching the story. But because this woman had to tarry for long in the presence of God, in the altar, Yeah. And you have not 
have received Jesus. If you have not had him as your personal Lord and Savior, please just identify yourself as we pray with you. Because that is the very first step that you are going to take in order to enjoy the benefits. When you enjoy that benefit of God, you need to be a born again. If you are here this morning and you believe maybe you are you, you were once a born again, but some because of some certain reasons, you, you are not aligned again with God. Your ways are not right with God. You have an advantage this morning that we pray for you. That we pray for you because this morning the presence of God is here already. It's about to take out everything that is not permitted to be in your life. Anything that is not permitted to be in your life, God is about to step in this morning. Rise up on your feet, people of God. 